Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and I welcome all of you to tonight's readings, and I might possibly make a, a sort of like a point I kind of like wanted to make, because believe me, as much as I, you guys probably know, I've been doing this for a while, there was something deep inside that I straight up just wanted to admit that I was not going to try and do tonight, but let's, let's, uh, let's uh, get down to business, and I'll possibly explain why. Okay. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Come, they said, let us contrive a plot against Jeremiah. It will not mean the loss of in instruction from the priests, nor of counsel from the wise, nor of messages from the prophets. And so, let us destroy him by his own tongue. Let us carefully note his every word. Heed me, O Lord, and listen to what my adversaries say. Must good be repaid with evil? That they should dig a pit to take my life? Remember that I stood before you to speak in their behalf, to turn away your wrath from them. So now deliver their children to famine. Do away with them by the sword. Let their wives be made childless and widows. Let their men die of pestilence. Their men be slain by the sword in battle. May cries be heard from their homes when suddenly you send plunderers against them. For they have dug a pit to capture me. They have hid my snares for my feet. But now, O Lord, know all their plans to slay me. Forgive not their crime. Plot, blot not out their sin in your sight. Let them go down before you. Proceed against them in the time of your anger. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading tonight uh, comes uh, from uh, the reading of, uh, of, of St. Matthew. As Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, he took the twelve disciples aside beside them and said to them on the way, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and hand him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and scrounged and crucified, and he will be raised on the third day. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee approached him with her sons and did him homage, wishing to ask for him some, for something. He said to her, What do you wish? She answered him, Command that these two sons of mine sit one at your right and the other at your left in your kingdom. Jesus said in reply, You do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the cup that I am going to drink? They said to him, We can. He replied, My cup you will be indeed drinking, but to sit at my right and at my left, this is not mine to give, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared by my father. When the ten heard this, they became indignant at the two brothers. But Jesus summoned them and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and the great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you shall be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you shall be your slave. Just so the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for the many. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Leadership, ladies and gentlemen, is a phrase that gets banded about a little bit too freely nowadays, because leadership is not always a complimentary uh, presence, ladies and gentlemen. Leadership is a heavy and a very, very important responsibility often bestowed on those who decide that they are going to, as they say, step up to the plate. It is because of many people who, we, who live nowadays, we get to judge for ourselves exactly what stands out in the quality of leader. I myself have a leader. Many people around me have their own leaders. People they instinctively look up to. People that, in many ways, are just like you and me, normal. 
But the reason why they stood out is because they instinctively chose to stood out and to show that they are worthy to be set an example towards. Think about the many leaders, for, great leaders throughout uh, history, ladies and gentlemen. What stood them out from uh, pretty much all of us? Why can't we be people like them? People who took it upon themselves to uh, lead great people, to one day lead the very leaders that come from them. For it surely goes without saying, ladies and gentlemen, is that one of the best great aspects that made Jesus stand out as a leader is that he was a very, very humbled uh, man as the Son of God. He was sent to this earth to serve us. We are not he we were not here to serve him because he served us. As it was said in Matthew's Gospel that he indeed realized that for for the transfiguration and for the prophecies to come true, then he would have no other choice but to hand himself over to the custody of Pontius Pilate. For he for it is him who is to be condemned to death. And bear in mind, ladies and gentlemen, we are now two weeks into the season of Lent. And before we know it, ladies and gentlemen, within about another three more weeks, it will work. It will all come to pass when uh, Jesus so uh, would be sent to die on a cross. What I need everybody to sort of like acknowledge at this point is that there are many, many people right now who are leaders without even beginning to realize that they are leaders. But surely, ladies and gentlemen, what is a leader if they do not have their followers? What would it be if they had nobody for to look up to them? Surely right now, ladies and gentlemen, you could be saying, because this video is not going to be seen, I mean, when am I recording this? The 3rd of March? And you guys probably will not be seeing this until January of next year. That is, if people decide to watch these at all. I have no reason to suspect why people would, but if there's anything in these messages, then I'm pretty sure... At least I'm reaching out to one person, and if I am simply reaching out to one person, then so be it. I hope they are enjoying this video as much as I am enjoying making these. <laughs> but the point is, I wanted to emphasize, ladies and gentlemen, is that leaders, like I said, come in many shapes. They come from many cultures. They come from all over the world. Their followers also come from all corners of the earth. But for me, what really makes Jesus stand out as a leader is that, again, in his own words, and I will uh, quote this once again, because this has to emphasize exactly why Jesus was definitely the, the leader of the pack, as it were, among his disciples. You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and the great ones make their authority over them felt. They impose their authority so that leaders become very, very acute and feared. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you shall be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you shall be your slave. Just so the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. As we are also covered in Jeremiah's reading earlier tonight, ladies and gentlemen, he was a man who was believed that he was going to be condemned to death, that the many people who were supposed to be following him simply decided to have a way with him. They were people who simply did not believe, and they did not believe in the love of God's, uh, of the power of God's love. But when it comes to uh, what was uh, transcribed in Matthew's Gospel tonight, ladies and gentlemen, what really makes Jesus stand out is that he makes it absolutely known to everyone. Everyone involved understood that it was Jesus was the one to save us all because he sacrificed himself for our sins so that we may be forgiven, not the other way around. We did we can we forced and we pointed the finger towards Jesus, yeah, sentencing him to be crucified, just in the same way as Jeremiah and his followers uh, forced were forcing Jeremiah to be condemned to death. Similarly, are we guilty of not believing that Jesus Christ was the one and only true leader? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.